School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Okay, so there's a lot of uh, corn growers in Ontario that are a little bit concerned based on the late planting that uh, will, our, you know, will my corn finish? What are, let's look at some examples of uh, the, some of the corn we got in the plots and talk about, you know, will this corn finish? Okay, so uh, here we've got a, a few different examples. So you're holding uh, 6535, is it Ken? 6535 G8. So with this one is probably uh, a very representative uh, maturity for the area that we're in. Okay, we're in Woodstock. We're in Woodstock, Ontario. So this is a 2975 heat unit hybrid. And the corn at the, at the, at the plot here was planted May the 25th. Yes. So right now we're looking at, uh, what do you got there? Can half milk line? At, it's, almost? it's just sneaking up on half milk line. So that hybrid there is, like you said, Doug, it's representative for the area. Corn basically progresses a quarter of a milk line worth per week. Let's say in ideal September conditions, we got a great day today, lots of sun, so it's progressing a little faster. But that hybrid there is basically two weeks of seasonal September weather away from achieving natural black layer without a frost. So it's got a good chance of making it. It, it, it will make it, yeah. It, it would take a very abnormally early frost to not, to not make it on its own. Well, let's cross our fingers. Dan, what do you got? Um, here we've got 8220 G2. 3400 heat unit hybrid so planted here as well very late day hybrid for this area which i would say more represents that june planted corn um looking basically just starting milk line at full dent so we're looking at uh four weeks basically until black layer um in the southwest a lot of june planted corn not maybe far, as far along as this planted june 15th should be good by uh, at black layer by by October, by Thanksgiving weekend, I'm gonna say, because we did back heat units down about 200 to 300 heat units from what we would normally be at. So, is that corn gonna make it? Absolutely, the Southwest generally doesn't get early frost because we're in the lake area. Maybe if you were in Northern, uh, like here on Bruce, that would be more of a concern, but in Elgin, Kent, Essex, uh, Lambton, not really a concern, I don't think, going forward. Okay, Doug, what do you have? I got 7161 G3, and you can see, that this one is very heat units. It's a 3,075 heat unit hybrid. Uh, it is 101 day corn. A little bit late side for Woodstock, Ontario, but there's still uh, a lot of guys that grow that maturity. One thing about this one, and you'll notice with this, we're looking at 100 heat units difference between it and the one that Ken has here. Yep. Uh, th very similar in turn, yep. in terms of. Uh, yeah, milk line progression. You can see where the milk line is here. So you can, you always want to look at the top end. When you break an ear, you look at the top end, and you'll be able to find your milk line. You can't find it as easy on this side. So there's your milk line, okay? And with that, you can see that these are very close. Even though physiological maturity, they're 100 heat units apart. However, this particular hybrid sets up flowers earlier than the normal, what we'd call it average on a, on a 3,050, 3,075 heat unit hybrid. So it flowers much like a 2,900 heat unit variety. Because it flowers that much earlier, it has a longer grain fill period. So this one here, physiological maturity, it is going to be, you know, another, probably another week after yeah. After uh, this 6535. one, 6535, it's going to be a week after it. Uh, however, at the end of the day, that's where it's going to pick up its yield, grain density, and you know if you have any any issues with uh, cloudy days this time of year and and kernel density, this one's had a, a little more time to to fill that grain. Okay, so what areas of Ontario are should be concerned or could be concerned right now in terms of uh, their corn finishing. Is there a specific area? I, I would think if you if you drew a line north and east of Highway 8, let's say, yeah, on June planted corn, I, I'm convinced that the two good weeks we had in May, which were the second and the fourth week of May in most areas for planting corn, that crop is going to make it given an average frost date. But if you go north and east of Highway 8, so a line from, let's say, Godridge to Toronto, yeah. June planted corn, 
uh, we'll need till Thanksgiving weekend, I think, for the most part. And start. if we get an abnormally early frost, then we could look at wetter corn and, and lighter test weights in those crops. Absolutely. So that, that would be the, the, the one situation where we're at risk. But the, certainly the, the above average, very rapid heat unit accumulation through July and early August has really brought a lot of acres out of the, out of the woods in terms of being in trouble with an early frost. And I would, I, I would agree with you, Ken, other than um, those guys aren't going to get the temperatures that we're going to experience yes. in the southwest. So we still need, in order for them to, to, to reach physiological maturity by Thanksgiving, so we've got a month right now to Thanksgiving yep. weekend, uh, they're going to need, for the most part, another 600 heat units, right? Um, that's they're going to have to chug along really efficiently to that, get that. That's a full good four weeks. If they're looking at June planted corn, just having reached full dent this week and starting to progress milk line, you're looking at a full four weeks under their weather conditions. Now the good news I would is say. not a lot of corn went in in that time frame up in that area. Up in yes. that area, A and B. We've got our next full moon is uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah. It's the 12th or 13th of October, I think. So, you know. Uh, Chances are we're in good Chances shape. Chances are we're in good shape. And we get days like today. And yeah. the fortunate news is growers were very proactive in the spring managing their heat units. Yeah. In terms of later planting, we've got to move back. We've got to focus on early to mid flowering hybrids. We've got to avoid the late flowering hybrids and get our get our uh, maturities in line in terms of the of the now new corn products we're selecting for late planting given the weather. Well, and I would say uh, to your comment on going from Godridge to Toronto, Ken, another area that may have some concerns would be that new market up through Sunderland for late planted corn, as well as parts of uh, eastern Ontario up near yes. Ottawa, where there was some corn going after hay that uh, that might struggle to make it where they get those uh, earlier heat units as well. Um, but as far as really that south of the 401 cor or the 401 corridor, I would say we're we're in very good, good shape. shape. Yeah. Good shape. Yeah. Uh, and that's being uh, much more optimistic than I would say we would have been on June 15th. Yes.